I have a second channel, Cube Compium DDX. Hey everybody, so here's a computer I haven't really featured in a while. This system has former Mid-Tower Deluxe hardware in it. It has um, the hardware that was taken out back in late 2017 when I upgraded Mid-Tower Deluxe to his current setup, the Ryzen 7 1700X. So what's in here is an AMD FX8120 processor. Uh, the uh, original 8-core, which I like to call a quad-core with two threads per core because I think that's really more what it is. Um, it's got 16 gigs of DDR3-1600 memory. It's got a Radeon HD 6750 graphics card. Um, Corsair power supply, and which uh, that was not from the Mid-Tower Lux. That was dropped in when I built this system. It's a uh, CX450. So 450 watt supply puts out most of its power on a 12 volt rail, and then we got uh, two DB drives in the front. One's a ROM drive and one's a burner. I do think. Yeah, and we got a card reader. We got a uh, 240 gig, yeah, 240 gig uh, solid state drive in there. And we've also got a uh, storage drive. Not sure of the size. It's been a, been a minute since I ran this thing. And uh, currently has Windows 10 on it. But I'm going to actually try out Windows 11. So we got our Windows 11 USB installer around here somewhere. i got to find it and I'll stick it in there and we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, before I start this up, I do want to mention one thing. So the motherboard that's in there is an ASRock 890FX Deluxe 4, which is technically a Socket AM3 motherboard, not a Socket AM3 Plus motherboard. This was one of the select, the, uh, select motherboards that with a BIOS flash you could upgrade from, like let's say, a Phenom 2 processor to the uh, new, at the time, AMD FX. Zambezi processor, which is what's in there. There was the, uh, for example, once in there is the 8120, you could have gotten the 8150, which was one step higher. But uh, anyways, that being said, let's go ahead and start this thing up and begin installation. Okay, so let's uh, you know, if we can see it in here. <laughs> I don't even see it there. Let's try a different port. Let's select, there we are, our USB stick. Okay, let's go ahead and run through setup. And you notice how once we uh, clicked uh, that last button, now the, we got the older Windows logo. I don't know if anyone's ever noticed that. Now I should mention that this is not a UEFI system. Like I mentioned, this board is a uh, Socket AM3 board and it has a classic BIOS on it, not UEFI. We're going to select Windows 11 Pro because that's we, we had Windows 10 Pro on this last. Accept the terms. Choose custom. 
Okay, drive zero is our SSD. Let's go ahead and wipe all the partitions off of it. If you notice something, um, one of the uh, requirements for Windows 11 calls for a system disk of 64 gigabytes or larger, but yet here in setup, the minimum is 52 gigabytes or larger. Create a new partition. Okay, we're ready to go. We'll let this do its thing and we'll come back when it's ready to go. So while I got the installer on, I do want to talk about this thing a little bit. So, um, I recently did a, a video featuring the uh, Sleeper HP computer which had the uh, Intel Core 2 Quad Q6600 and the GTS 450 in it. That was a bit of a space heater, and let's be honest, this machine here is also a bit of a space heater. And uh, it's, I can like the air come out the back here. It's definitely, definitely starting to feel a little warm. And the air come out the power supply is definitely starting to feel warm. Now this power supply does not have the fan run real fast, and even though it's an 80 plus power supply, uh, the setup is definitely, I'd say it's putting, putting some load on it. Um, it's a 450 watt supply, which theoretically I think should be enough for this system. Um, graphics card does have an auxiliary power connection on it. So, this graphics card though is not super, super high end by any means. Uh, 6750. I don't think the power requirements of that card were too extreme. But, nonetheless, this thing does send out like a space heater. And I got the fan curve on this thing set a little higher to keep air going through it. So the cooler that's in there is actually a stock AMD cooler for the FX8120. But I had the fan on it swapped to a, um, to a different fan that's a bit more aggressive in nature than the stock fan to try to throw some additional air through that cooler. It does work, but it can get noisy. I mean... The fan does sometimes ramp up when the CPU has worked pretty hard. So, I mean, this thing, it definitely is a space heater, and that's why I do say I do like the newer Ryzen uh, processors, because they do a whole lot more, and they're more efficient. So this processor, it's a 125 watt TDP. There was one, I think it was the FX9590 that I think has a TDP of 220 watts. I mean, that thing was just a monster. And some of y'all who watched my cooking with Intel videos had mentioned that processor that I should try to fry some blowing on it. I must say it would probably work really well. Um, wouldn't last very long though. But, uh, you know, this one and the uh, processor I had before, the Phenom 2 uh, Quad Core 965, they were both space heaters. Yeah, I remember years ago when this hardware was in the mid-tower deluxe. And of course had that radiator sitting on top. You could walk by and just feel the heat coming off that radiator. Because it's, of course, water-cooled. So I do have some plans in mind for this hardware. Um, it's not going to be spending too much more time in this case. So the system back there in the closet, that's the, that's, that is the uh, bill from a late friend. I featured that one though a while back in the video, which actually got quite a bit of attention. Um, I'm planning on doing a little bit of swapping out here and there because that system has an AMD FX water cooler, all in one liquid cooler in it. And the processor that's on that motherboard is a uh, Phenom 2 Quad Core 925. So my idea is to take the motherboard and CPU out of that one. Maybe the graphics card too, I don't know and take the motherboard and CPU out of that one and just, switch, and just switch them around because that 925 is of course a 95 watt TDP processor and should run 
a little better and I'll push this thing to its absolute max as far as you know for thermals because I mean this case is definitely not the best for uh, ventilation I mean I've made some improvements here and there I cut out the original fan grills and all that good stuff and put these in it's a nice looking case but of course it is quite dated this is a Ray Max Scorpio case and one thing I could not stand about this motherboard is it takes so long to post and it's just kind of buggy um, I can't say for several years it carried that FX8120 overclock to 4.2 gigahertz now I had to run it at stock I don't know if the CPU um, had, I don't know if the CPU had uh, basically been damaged or had its life shortened due to overclocking because I had overclocked pretty hard for several years or I don't know if it's the motherboard that's having these issues. But uh, anyways, I mean, that stock it still runs perfectly fine. You can see we're running through the uh, Windows 11 setup right now, and we're just about ready to go. It's gonna, it's gonna complete this step, and it's gonna restart, and then we'll run through the out of box experience. And let's make sure, yep, make sure that the uh, Ethernet cable is disconnected from out back. That way it doesn't force us to set up a Microsoft account. But even if it did, there is a way around that. So we'll let this finish up. Okay, let's go and run to set up here. And you can see we're just blowing through the setup pretty fast. I'll tell you why the FX8120 is quite dated. It's still it's still a performer. You pair it up with lots of memory and a solid drive, it it just it just goes. And you can see we're at the desktop, we're still waiting on the task the task board to load. You can see the CPU usage is still is actually pretty low. Still waiting on the task bar to I'm gonna tell you what's really weird. It's, I don't know what the deal is. So you can see how the, the frequency there is just going all over the place. Showing sometimes, what, 3.9? This is a stock 3.1 gigahertz processor. Still waiting on task for load. I don't know what the deal is. Apparently, apparently if one is 11, it just seems like on the first uh, boot to desktop, the task bar just takes a freaking long time to to actually pull up yeah it's funny you can see right there base speed 3.1 gigahertz um, yeah of course it's bouncing all over the place now it's typical for her to do that when you of course have the uh, performance setting to power save or balance which that's what it's set to right now but seeing it bounce way over 3.1 is just kind of bizarre I do believe this processor does have a boost clock at its stock setting, but I don't know exactly for sure what that is. Is there 3.6 that we that we <laughs> got 3.6, and uh, there's our start. Uh, excuse me, our taskbar. Let's go ahead and hook this to the internet or to the network so that way it can fetch drivers and that way it can access some network resources. and watch the time get changed back to Pacific time. It's something that just absolutely annoys me about modern Windows is how it does that. So you have to go into settings, you have to go change it back. Go 
going to time and language and date and time and have to set it back. So we're going to be getting some drivers including a display driver any moment now. Access a couple of things real quick. Go ahead and install our um, hotfix to stop Windows Update from automatically downloading and installing updates. This little trick also, this little trick is something that I made in Windows 10 but also works in Windows 11. And also, while we're in here, let's go ahead and fetch the PC Help Check to show how this computer currently running Windows 11 does not meet the Microsoft Elite class requirements for Windows 11. Now I should mention, I mean, I've I've posted several videos here lately of running Windows 11 on computers that don't meet the minimal Elite class requirements. Um, does that mean should you install Windows 11 on computers that don't meet the Elite class requirements? That's totally your call. I would not suggest um, installing it on a computer you're selling to somebody. At least, that's my opinion right now. And so it thinks this is 10 years old, which is about right. The motherboard is from 2012. And of course, this application was intended to be installed on Windows 10, but it can be installed on Windows 11 too. And we can see how this computer currently running Windows 11 Pro does not meet the Windows 11 system requirements, or as I like to call it, the Microsoft Elite class requirements. The PC must support Secure Boot. TPM 2.0 must be enabled. The processor isn't currently supported. But there is at least 4 gigs of RAM. There's at least 64 gigabytes of system disk, and the processor has two or more cores. And you can see right there, as I've said in the beginning of this video, uh, the FX, the the, early, the AMD FX processors, they marketed this as a fancy eight-core processor. They even went as far as to ship them in these fancy tin boxes. This is the one. This is the one that the processor in this system was shipped in, including its cooler. It claims it is an 8-core processor, but when you go into like Task Manager and look, um, you can see right there, cores for logical processors 8. So the Ryzen 7, in contrast, is an 8-core processor two threads per core with 16 logical processors. So I think it's I think we can safely say that the Ryzen 7 was technically the first 8 core desktop processor from AMD, not the FX 8 core. The FX 8 core, I mean from what I see it is actually a quad core. <laughs> and the FX 4 core is really a dual core. So, I mean, you can draw your own conclusions there. I think there's been some debate about that, but uh, anyways. So, I mean, you can see, of course I'm going to go too deep into things, but uh, I mean, this thing, it runs Windows 11 pretty dang well. Let's do a restart. I don't really do much anything right now, the, uh, at least the system disk.
Okay, not sure what the deal was with it uh, hanging up on restart, but we're back. And the uh, boot up time wasn't too awful bad. One thing I'm curious of... I can't stand this right here. You have to do control delete to get task manager in this version of Windows. Because when you right click on the taskbar, all you get is that right there. Matter of fact, if I have it in my files, there we are, start all back. And you can see how it shifts. Um, so I'm going to do, I'm going to choose proper 11. And there we are. Now I do mention that I, sh I should mention that this start all back is actually um, you do have to pay for this. I think it gives you like uh, it gives you I forget how many days, a hundred days worth of trial before you actually have to activate it. So that's not too bad. Let's go and download and install this update. And you can see now, um, of course, the icons are aligned to the left like you have like in Windows 10. If you right click on the taskbar, you get all the stuff that you would normally get in the taskbar. Like for example, you get Task Manager, you can just right click and choose Task Manager and bingo, Task Manager. And also, um, in File Explorer. Instead of getting the uh, the very limited um, options when you right click on something, like for example right here, you get the full menu. So and also, not to mention you also get the uh, Windows 7 style start menu with this. So going to personalization here, I'm gonna change it over to dark mode because I do like dark mode a whole lot better than light mode much nicer much nicer so you may be able to tell that the uh, translucent menus are working just fine on this as I expected they would so I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up CPU Z as well as horror monitor. Yeah, this thing runs nice and fast. I definitely do need to repurpose this hardware. Um, either give it to a friend or something, I mean, because it's pretty, I mean, it's, it is kind of old, it's 10 years old, but still, it's definitely got some punch. Yeah, I'm just watching what's going on here. You go on the control panel. I'm gonna set the performance options to, uh, or the power options to performance, high performance rather. And it's funny this now the CPU is running. Well, it's still kind of back and forth between. Yeah, it's just really weird. I mean, it says the multiplier is between seven to twenty. You multiply 200 by 20, you get 4,000, which is 4 gigahertz. So, there you have it. And there's a look at our temperatures. And I was curious what the processor is running at. We see the GPU there, which is running at 41 degrees C. Oh, yeah. Uh, another thing I forgot, um, I just now remember about this processor is the <laughs> it's ne it never has read properly the uh, the temperatures they've always read super low it says it's only running at 16 degrees Celsius which I know is not correct um, 
Motherboard says that it's idling right now about 36 to 40, which sounds about, that sounds more accurate because, I mean, it's just sitting there idling. You know, we give it some stuff to do, it's definitely going to warm up for sure. So there was, some, there was definitely some quirks with that processor, no doubt about it. Um, it seems that the auto wattage isn't terrible, but of course, I mean, not the greatest by any means either. So, yeah, it's been a while since I actually uh, loaded uh, start all back onto Windows 11. So what I'm gonna do is, since this machine has definitely got some got some power, let's go ahead and uh, run through Windows Update and download uh, the uh, cumulative update that fixes some things with the uh, settings. So I'm gonna hit download now and go ahead and let these updates run. So we definitely got some drivers in there too. Um, so, so that's another thing. Um, there was a lot of speculation about whether Windows Update would function on computers that don't meet the Microsoft Elite class requirements for Windows 11. Uh, the thing is, it seems, at least from my experience, it seems that Windows Update does work. But the question, though, is when a new feature update comes out. Like, for example, uh, Windows 11 22H2, that should be out later this year. Probably by October, October if I were to guess. Um, it would be interesting to see what happens uh, when that comes out. I'll definitely be trying it out on my uh, dedicated Windows 11 test rig, which is down here on the floor. It's that uh, AMD uh, A-Series 6420K system. I'm not going to have Windows 11 on this machine for too long. But, uh, I will, I will have to do some testing once uh, that comes out. We'll have to see if it would perform an in-place upgrade without any nags about the system not meeting the minimum requirements. Now, I think I've heard that in the next build of Windows 11, uh, there may be a watermark down on the right corner of the screen if your system does not meet the Microsoft Elite class requirements. And the reason why I call them the Microsoft Elite class requirements is simply because they're just they're just ridiculously high. I mean, time and time again, I mean, you can look up on YouTube. There's so many people out there who have ran Windows 11 on, geez, a whole lot of different hard, a lot of different configurations that are definitely way older than uh, 8th Gen Intel Core or Ryzen 2000. So. I mean, and I've said this in pretty much all of my videos featuring running Windows 11 on unsupported hardware, is what ha like what's going to happen when 2025 comes and Windows 10 loses support. Microsoft's going to have a decision to make. They're either going to have to uh, extend support for Windows 10 like they did with Windows XP. I mean, Windows XP support got extended, th and a lot of it, well, I think, was thanks to um, netbooks because, I mean, they came out in 2000. Eight, and of course XP had already been out for seven years at that point. If Windows XP would have followed a uh, ten-year lifespan, it would have ended support in 2011. But as we all know, Windows XP ended support in 2014. So we'll have to see what happens um, when 2025 gets here. Um, either they could relax the minimum requirements for Windows 11 make them a, a bit more realistic or they would have to extend support for Windows 10. So anyways, I'm going to let all this stuff run and uh, we'll come back when it's done. Okay, so now this thing is running wide open. And, uh, you can see that CPU temperature is up at about at least a report by the motherboard almost 60 degrees Celsius and here it says 4243 and I can hear that fan it's just a screaming and the air coming out the back of this thing is definitely warm so it definitely is a space heater for sure Okay, so I went ahead and uh, let those updates install and installed the uh, 
cumulative updates, so if we have a look. We go into apps and default apps. So, for example, if I was to uh, change, uh, or if I was to install Google Chrome or Firefox or whatever, and I want, and I want to change the uh, default browser for, uh, yeah, let's see. For example, you just look at Microsoft Edge. So you can see up the top there they did add this option to make Microsoft Edge or Google Chrome or whatever your default browser and set how to change all these individual ones. But still, the simple fact that it, that they went in and wrecked up the uh, default settings or default app settings to go by file type, it really just messes everything up in general. Like for example, I mean like let's let's look for like the, the built-in video player. I don't know if it's still called movies and TV. Yep, up there. So <clears throat> you can see that even the update does not apply to things like your video player or your default photo viewer or stuff like that. See, that's one of the reasons why um, I think a lot of people are going to prefer to stick with Windows 10 because stuff like this. It's like, why did they go in there and mess all that kind of stuff up? Now, I'd be curious to see how everything is in the new uh, Windows 11 build when it comes out. But, anyway, it's going to wrap this up. Um, let's try restarting this again. See, maybe this time it won't hang. Do a restart and a startup. And there you have it. So, definitely safe to say that despite this stuff being, this hardware being 10 years old roughly, it <laughs> seems to run Windows 11 just fine. Um, now, like I mentioned, even even though it run, seems to run it fine, I um, still can't exactly suggest installing it, um, especially if you're. Uh, if you're setting up a computer to sell to somebody I mean this is how it is apparently so anyways that wraps up for this video give you a quick look inside at this uh, space heater so anyways that is uh the old Mattel Luxor running Windows 11. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Well, everybody, that wraps up for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the computer channel, and be sure to tick that bell so you get notified when new videos are posted. Also, don't forget, I have a whole lot of other interesting videos here on the channel to check out. And also, in addition, I have a second channel, CubeComp MTDX, where I have all sorts of other videos not exactly related to technology. Links to the channels are available at the end of this video. Again, I thank you for your support and thanks for watching this video.